Hi there, my name is Catherine, I hope you're doing well. Today is going to be my May TBR, which I'm actually filming really early in April because I'm going to be up in Scotland at the end of this month. So I wanted to pre-film my videos for then so I'm not worrying about it when I'm up there. So because of that, I'm really having to think ahead <laughs> about my reading plans for May and what I think I'm gonna be in the mood for. So I'm kind of just basing it off what I'm feeling right now and it may get to a month's time when this video has gone out and I don't wanna read any of these books, but I doubt that because they're all very good or at least I'm hoping they're all very good. Most of these I've heard excellent things about. So I'm going in with high expectations, which is dangerous. But anyway, let's get into it. So it is no secret that I love dark academia as a genre, but the embarrassing thing about that is that I have never read The Secret History. So I really, really am determined to rectify this in May and finally read The Secret History by Donna Tart. It needs no introduction or explanation. This is the book that kind of just invented dark academia and is beloved by so many people and I don't know that much about it going in. I know that it follows a group of students at a very elite university in New England. It's written in a very pretentious tone that has become associated with the dark academia genre and I know that the general plot of it is that one of their classmates has died the group of students that we're following are involved in it in some way. I don't know whether they committed the murder, where one of them did the murder. That is as much as I know. I'm pretty positive this is going to be a five star read for me. I am shocked and appalled and embarrassed that I haven't read it. So May is the month that that is going to be fixed. And I can finally say that I love Dark Academia without being embarrassed that I haven't read the Dark Academia book. Next book I want to read is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, which I've heard so much about for the past like two years, I think. Only good things. This is a romance which follows Eva, who is an erotica writer, and Shane, who is an award-winning literary author. And they meet at a literary event where sparks immediately fly and everyone kind of notices how well they're getting on but no one realizes that they actually already know each other and that 20 years earlier they had a week-long fling and that they've been essentially writing to each other through their published books. The book then follows the next seven days after this re-meeting between the two of them. It brings out like past traumas, brings up questions of trust, if they can trust each other again after what happened in their previous week spent together 20 years ago. I think this sounds like a romance that is gonna be right up my street. It sounds like it's going to be really passionate and intense. There's gonna be some real deep dives into heartbreak and recovering from heartbreak. Because it's set in Brooklyn during June in a heat wave, I think that whole setting is going to really add to the tension in this relationship between the two characters. Obviously I don't know, but because it is set during the summer in Brooklyn. I just think it's gonna be a really nice mood read for May. Maybe I should probably be reading it in June, to be honest, because I'm hoping in May the, the weather starts to get a bit warmer. This book has been on my TBR list for so long, so I really, really, really want to get right into it, if not in May definitely this summer. The next book I want to read is Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Ernest Cunningham. <laughs> no, it's not by Ernest Cunningham. Ernest Cunningham is a character in it. This is by Benjamin Stevenson. Apologies. This is a modern murder mystery which follows our main character, Ernest Cunningham, who is telling us about how each of his family members has murdered someone. That is literally as much as I know about this book. I think it takes place at a ski resort, possibly. But I'm going into this really blind and I'm just going into it um, because I've seen a couple people on YouTube talk about it and loved it. Apparently the way it's written is that it sets up at the beginning. There's like a disclaimer telling you in which chapter someone is killed. You're already given information so you know when each murder is coming throughout the book and that just sounds really interesting to me. It sounds like doing that would be really hard to pull off but people seem to really love it so I think it 
the author has pulled off and I basically just want to know how. You can tell I don't know much about the plot of this. I, I'm just drawn into the way the book has been written. It sounds like a difficult way to write a murder mystery and I want to see how it's done basically. The next book I'm going to read is She Smells of Turmeric by Natasha Sondak which I'm reading for my Storygraph Reads the World Challenge. For May, I've decided to go for Indonesia as the country. It's about a woman called Cecilia whose father is Indonesian and after he dies, Cecilia moves to Indonesia to move in with her wealthy grandparents so she can try and live out the life that her father had envisioned for her. However, her grandparents don't like the American lifestyle that she has been brought up in and kind of try and mould her into a perfect Indonesian granddaughter and this ends up pushing Cecilia away from them and so Cecilia ends up finding refuge in a group of really rich elite successful friends and she gets wrapped up in the this world of glamour in Jakarta and as she gets to know this group of friends she kind of starts to find out things about their pasts and secrets which they're hiding behind all of this glamour and she starts to feel more connected to her father's hometown but when her reality starts catching up with her she starts to realise the reality of the city that she is living in. On Storygraph here it says she smells of turmeric as an intimate tale of estrangement and reconciliation and speaks to anyone who has felt alone in their community. I feel like this is going to be a kind of slow paced tale of this woman finding herself, finding her identity, learning about this part of her that she doesn't quite know or understand yet, learning about her father's past, all while living in this entirely new city to her. I think I'm most excited for the relationship she'll have with the grandparents and that kind of tension between two cultures. So I'm excited to see whether I enjoy it. The next book I've added to my list literally like five minutes ago because I was watching a recent reading vlog by Reagan who was looking for more romance books that are up her street and I need to get back into reading romance because I love it but I've just been so into thrillers recently that I've not really been reading any. So I want to read Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven. The way Reagan was describing this series and the way she was hyping it up and getting excited by it was making me excited so I want to check it out. This basically is set in a world dictated by an empire and every year the empire demands that each village sends a young woman to the empire's capital to be burned alive in front of a mass audience, I guess in a demonstration of power. And our main character in the book is called Galene and she has a special magical ability that allows her to change appearance. Because of this power, every year her village has been sending her to get burned alive in front of everyone, disguised as a different woman each year so she's not caught and she goes, pretends to be burned alive, I guess that's something to do with her magic too, that she escapes, goes back and everyone else in the village is safe, no one dies from that village, unbeknownst to the capital. But this year, a gladiator called Azarian sees through her illusion and blackmails her into helping him escape his slavery so that he can return back to his village but he also wants her to help him reclaim his birthright because I think he's basically like a prince or something <laughs> in his village. It just sounds really fun. The way Reagan was describing it, it sounds like the romance is very slow burn which I'm here for. I've been reading a lot of romance recently where it's just all quite quick and there's not enough tension. I want like fanfic level slow burn. And this is the first book in a series as well called The Fallen Empire. And the second book, Dragon Unleashed, has the prettiest cover I've ever seen in my life. I think it's absolutely stunning. So I'm really hoping I enjoy this series. Another book that I am desperate to read and have been for a while is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. This kind of combines my love of dark academia with my love of romanticy. I think it's a rivals to lovers romance. It's young adult. I've been really into young adult recently. I've just got such high hopes for this because I've heard so many good things about it and I think this could be a real all-time favourite for me, hopefully. Hopefully I'm not jinxing it. It follows a girl called 
Effie Sayre, who has always believed in fairy tales and specifically loves an author called Emrys Murden. So when Murden's family announces a competition to redesign the late author's estate, Effie's like, this is the job for me. But when she gets there, she finds that she's met with a bit of an impossible task and the residents at the manor are not very forthcoming or welcoming, including a literature scholar called Preston Hillary, who is determined to expose Murden as a fraud. And the two of them basically start working together to start to piece together the mystery that surrounds Murden's legacy. I want to read this book for the romanticy dark academia vibes more than anything. I don't really get what the plot is about too much from the description, but I have heard really, really good things about it. My sister-in-law actually rated it five stars. So high hopes for this one. But yes, that is my May TBR. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you're planning to read this month, if you've got anything exciting coming up, and I really hope that you have an amazing upcoming week. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.